Good evening, and welcome back to the Poe Museum. I'm standing tonight in the death room. That's right, an entire gallery devoted to the mystery of Edgar Allan Poe's untimely demise. This is where you'll see the last letter that Poe ever wrote. The last photograph of him ever taken. The trunk he was carrying with him at the time of his death, even his clothing. But amongst all those items, these have got to be the standouts. A lock of Poe's hair cut from his brow while he's lying in state. Or how about this one? A fragment of the original coffin in which Poe was buried for the tw first 26 years of his afterlife. If you want to learn more about those, you'll have to check earlier installments of the Curator's Crypt. But I'm going to show you this little key found in Poe's pocket just after his death. This bore witness to the great poet's final breaths. And might it finally unlock the mystery which still surrounds his final days? We'll find out on tonight's installment of The Curator's Crypt. Let's take a closer look. It's a little key. This end, the handle's broken. The other end is slightly bent. It's smaller than a typical house key. I'll solve that mystery. It's the key to his trunk, that one, right over there. And that makes sense. Poe was traveling at the time of his death. He was on a lecture tour. He was performing his works up and down the East Coast and selling magazine subscriptions. So he would have needed the trunk to carry his clothes, his notes, his books, everything else that he'd require. The problem is, he turned up in Baltimore and the trunk was still here in Richmond. And that also makes sense. Poe was taking a quick trip up north to Philadelphia and New York. He was passing through Baltimore on the way. So maybe he didn't need the trunk. He'd also had his trunk confiscated by his hotel for lack of payment. So when he was in Baltimore, he really wasn't supposed to be there, just passing through. What's really mysterious is that when he was discovered in a Baltimore polling place on election day, four days before his death, he was wearing somebody else's clothes. So why did he have his key in his pocket? If his pocket wasn't his pocket, because his pants weren't his pants. Well, there's different theories. Let's first start out by finding out why he might have been wearing somebody else's clothes. The first theory that came to mind by Joseph Snodgrass, the man who picked him up and took him to the hospital, he said, I would not so readily have recognized him had I not been notified of his apparel, his hat, or rather the hat of somebody else for he had evidently been robbed of his clothing or cheated in exchange, was a chief palm leaf one without a band and soiled his coat of the commonest alpaca and evidently second hand, and his pants of gray mixed casimir dingy and badly fitting. He wore neither vest nor neckcloth, if I remember aright, while his shirt was badly crumpled and soiled. So Snodgrass thought that Poe had been robbed or cheated out of his clothes. And another detail you'll notice there, even though Poe was well known to be a fine dresser, even if he didn't have the extra money to buy nice clothes, he wore the best things he could find. He was found wearing cheap, secondhand, ill-fitting clothes. Now you'll notice he wasn't wearing a vest, so he couldn't have had this in his vest pocket because he didn't have a vest. It must have been in a pants pocket or a jacket pocket. Another theory about why Poe might have been wearing somebody else's clothes is that he was at a polling place on election day, Ryan's Fourth Ward Polls. And political gangs at the time had a practice called cooping, where they would find people from out of town, beat them up, get them really drunk, 
and use them as repeat voters, just changing their clothes each time. So that might explain why they found him where they found it, but not why he'd still have the key with it. Another theory is that it was raining when Poe was there. We can check the newspapers and verify that. Maybe his clothes were soaking wet and he had to find some secondhand clothes to wear just so he'd have something dry. But this doesn't really explain why his clothes were dirty, why they're all wrinkled up. And another theory is that earlier that summer, Poe had been in Philadelphia, worried people were trying to track him down and kill him. He'd actually begged his friend to shave off his mustache so they wouldn't recognize him. So this theory goes that maybe Poe was trying to disguise himself to hide out for people that he maybe imagined were following him, or maybe people really were. But this thing is completely unverifiable. There's no way to prove or disprove it. So why did he have his key with him? Or how about another theory? What if it's not his key? What if this is just the key of whoever's clothes he happened to be wearing? And that key was similar enough to Poe's key that it just happened to open his trunk after his death. That's another one that's not really verifiable. We can't prove or disprove it. It's just another theory. But either way, Poe, somebody else's clothes, and his key were dragged to the carriage and taken to Washington College Hospital where he spent his final four days under the supervision of John J. Moran, his attending physician. And Moran left us pretty good records of what happened in Poe's final days. He was in and out of consciousness, talking to shadows in the wall, ranting, raving, not making any sense. He had no memory of what had become of his trunk or his clothes. Yeah, the physician actually asked, where are your clothes? But on his last night on earth, he screamed the name Reynolds over and over again as if somehow Reynolds was the clue to how Poe had arrived in that condition. The problem is he never told us just who Reynolds was or is. And that's why I'm calling on this Reynolds to confess. You know what you did. It's time to step forward and share it with the world. Until then, this remains the last key to solving the mystery of Poe's death. And you can see it right here at the Poe Museum. And if you'd like to help the museum unravel the last mysteries of Edgar Allan Poe, why not become a patron at patreon.com slash Poe Museum. So thanks for joining us this week. And I know why you're here. You just stuck around to see more gratuitous footage of the Poe Museum cats being adorable. So here you go. <laughs>